Hi, my name is Hazuki and I'm an inline figure skater and a figure skater. One of the questions I get asked most often in like my comments and my DMs, etc. I know I did an FAQ like a month and a half ago and I don't know why I didn't include this question in it because it's one that I get probably more than any of those other ones. Whether I think in their specific situation they should get inline figure skates. So I thought I could try to make as overarching of a video as I could in this. Obviously every person's gonna be different, every situation is different, and this is entirely my own opinion. I'm not a professional, I'm not qualified in any way. It's, it's just what I think, okay? This is, again, like I say, very broad and general advice. If it doesn't fit to you, then you're gonna have to rethink a little bit. That's okay. There's about three things that you want to consider. First is budget. Some people are lucky that they don't have to worry about money. Um. I'm gonna just speak for all university and college kids when I say that is not the case. Obviously everyone's financial situation is different, but you know, certain people are gonna be more willing to spend more amounts of money than others, and if you are younger, you're gonna have to think about money a little bit more. Inline skating is an expensive sport, figure skating is an expensive sport, and with inlines you're gonna have to get a new frame set, new wheels if it doesn't come with the frame set, now they usually do, and new accessories, whether it be toe stops, or screws, or allen keys, whatever it may be. Um, and most likely, you'll have to either get a new boot, or repurpose an old boot. Either way, that's a lot of things that you need to buy that are pricey. <laughs> Generally, if you're on a tighter budget, you're not gonna go for the roll lines. Uh, Golden Horse, Snow White, Picks, can't remember Off Ice's price range, but there's obviously frames that are cheaper than others. <laughs> and that's something you probably want to consider a little bit. Also, keep in mind, depending on how much you plan to use your inline skates, you might want to get new boots for it. Have a clear budget in mind, especially if you are someone who needs to be able to budget their spendings. A lot of people have different specific situations as to why they can't go ice skating. You might have a rink that closes during the summer, you might have a rink that's really, really far away, or a rink that's just closed for COVID which there was a lot of last year. Uh, I think a lot of them are opening back up now, but that's mostly for countries that have a lot bigger of a skating population, I guess. So depending on the situation, getting inlines would be smarter than others. If it's COVID, then, I mean, every country is different and every region is different, but vaccine rollouts might make it so that the rinks open sooner. If it's just for COVID, then especially so far into the pandemic, I wouldn't recommend getting a new set of inlines. If you have seasonal rinks, that, that used to be my situation. I got my inlines originally because I didn't think that my rink opened during the summer. Turns out it did, and I just wasn't really good at researching. But back then, especially, I didn't have much chances to go skating during the summer. I was just like into the point of falling in love with the sport and I really wanted to continue it. And there was a lot more chances for me to inline skate than ice skate during the summer. And also, back then, I didn't have to pay rent or food. And I had an allowance. If you live really far away from a rink, you know, you're probably going to have a tennis court or a basketball court or a parking lot a lot closer to you than a rink that's, you know, two, three, four hours away. And in that case, you might be more inclined to get inlines. And that would actually make sense. And then finally, you also want to think about what you want out of your inlines. So when I got my inlines, I wanted to be able to do an axle, I'll be honest. I still can't do one and it's been two years. But depending on what you want to improve on, you can actually find significantly cheaper alternatives. If you want to learn how to do spins better, and that's all you want to do, then you know, get a spinner board. If you want to work on your edges, but not really much else, then you might want to consider getting normal rollerblades. They're actually called inlines. Rollerblades are a trademark. It's like saying Google, and they could actually lose their trademark because it's like become so synonymous with inline skates. That's a whole nother topic. Point being, if you're starting out on ice skates and you're still working on edges and trying to figure that out, you're probably just going to want to get normal inline skates instead of inline figure skates, just to kind of cut down on the cost a little bit. Once you get into the point where you're doing three turns and brackets and counters and other stuff requiring a more rockered blade and a toe pick, then you'll start considering getting inlines. If you want to get better jumps, like I did with my axle back then, but nothing else, then do off-ice jump practice. <laughs> or get uh, one of those aerial harness thingies, or make one. I've seen people make them before. That kind of engineering scares me just because I don't trust myself making things that will support my entire body weight while I'm spinning in the air. All kinds of alternatives exist. You got off-ice, you got spinners, you got jump practice. It's kind of the same thing. Cat! <laughs> Needy little kitten. What was I saying? You have spinners, you can do off ice, you can do jump practice, you can do stretches, uh, and you can get normal rollerblades. And depending on what you want to get out of inline skates, um, it might be better to consider the alternatives first. Don't do that! It might be better to consider the alternatives before you commit to getting inline skates. Here are some things to keep in mind when you're looking at inline skates 
the differences between figure skating and inline skating. So again, I covered some of this back in my FAQ video, but there are some things that I did forget to mention. Um, here are some things to expect once you get inline skates, or what it feels like to be in inline skate. There's a crazy amount of friction. Like, when you're on ice, the only thing that's causing friction is the ice to the blade. Ice is slippery, and so is metal. So when they, when you're skating, it's it's slippery. That's you know the whole basis for figure skating. When you're skating on inlines, you have two points of friction instead of the, just the one. You have the asphalt or the concrete or like the wood flooring or whatever it may be. You got your polyurethane wheels, and then you have the axle that goes through the wheel that attaches the wheel onto the frame, and it's kind of the reason why the wheel can spin. So those are two places where things are constantly rubbing against each other. I don't totally understand the inner workings of like the axle and the axle bolt and the bearings. So I'm sure there's more, like the wheel bearings are touching the outside and the, and the, 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 actually I think, I don't think the axle really moves at all, it just like holds it together, but like the wheel bearings and then the thing and the, point being, it's harder to move on inline slightly, like it's not hard to move, it's just, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, it's slower? I don't think too many people are surprised by that, but like, please keep it in mind. You're also probably gonna go just slower and not let yourself get as fast. I'm not sure about other people, but like, I'd assume it's the same. Personally, when I'm inline skating, I am very much aware of the fact that I can fall, and if I do fall, then I will hurt myself probably badly. The only times I've ever actually hurt myself are on inlines. That being road rash and the sprained double wrists. Double sprained mild wrists. Double mildly sprained. Two mild, the uh, double mildly sprained wrists. Admittedly, I haven't had bad accidents on inlines or ice yet, but it does scare me a lot when I'm on inlines. I also have, when I'm skating at my house, I have the ability to literally crash through glass and fall a story and a half onto rocks and front lawn. Another big part of this is that your spins are gonna be slower and they're not gonna be as intuitive and it's a lot harder to master them or be able to do them. If you want to get inlines to get better at spins, I don't recommend it. If you want to get inlines for other stuff, then yeah, that makes sense. But if you want to get inlines for getting better at ice skating spins, that's just, that's not gonna work. Get a spin board. Invest in like one of those e-spin or $60 ones, you know? Spinning on inlines, there's a reason why that's my first video. It's awful and it has a lot of issues with it, but it is the reason why it's my first video and my most watched video. It's because it's really f***ing hard. One of the obvious differences between inline figure skating and figure skating is wheels to blade. Um, that's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, the thing is, wheel profiles are funky. I've talked about this in my Edges video, I think. On ice, you have two blades, you have like a little you have like a this, and there's a hollow, and there's two edges, and with wheels, it's kind of the inverted version of that. So you don't really have specific edges, like you don't have a left and a right edge, you just kind of have like a left and a right side. <laughs> um, the toe pick feels different, and the toe pick is fat in the sense that it, like it, it's, it's not like a thin line, and it's... It's not like a 2D toe pick, it's a 3D toe pick, and so sometimes when, you're bl when your blade is like sideways like this, your toe pick is like this, and like it runs against the ground when it normally wouldn't have. It's hard to explain, but it gets annoying. It happens with my Ina Bauer. I can't do an Ina Bauer in inlines because my toe pick always rubs against the ground on its side instead of like the front. It makes no sense, whatever. And rockers feel weird because, you know, you got, you kind of got a V shape instead of like a normal rocker. Uh, these kind of go without saying, but they all do make a bit of a difference in how inlines feel as compared to ice. Just be prepared for that change. <laughs> Frames also tend to be heavier than blades. You know, with blades you got like a thin piece of metal and like it's just this. With inlines, I can't show it to you, but you have the three wheels, plus you have all the like the inner working stuff, plus you have essentially two blades worth of metal like on either side, kind of like holding everything together. It's a lot heavier. It is what it is. Um, Admittedly, I did get a heavy boot on top of my heavy bra blades, and that just kind of made it unnecessarily hard on me. <laughs> Transitioning between inline and figure, especially at the beginning, is hard. It's really hard. <laughs> I, again, this is another thing I've talked about before, it's just everything I've talked about is all over the place. This consolidates it in one spot. But, um... Yeah, it feels different. Uh, just the mechanics of how you do things like three turns. 
across inline and figure are different. That's not a surprise to anyone if you've seen other videos from this channel. Um, but yeah, no one told me that and that was annoying. The transition gets a lot easier once you do it more often. Um, at the beginning of this past October, which is when I made the Back to Ice video, I hadn't been on ice in March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, eight months, seven months, eight months. Um, and I'd been in inlines almost every day, which, you know, kind of screws with your head a little bit in terms of how you do spins and glides and everything. Now that the rinks are kind of open for me, arguably because I think the province is shutting down tomorrow again, I don't remember. I'm getting a lot more practice of switching between inlines and ice, and so it's becoming a lot quicker. It is just one of those things that you get better at the more you do it. I explained it to someone as switching between driving two cars that are like different makes. And I don't think that was the best of metaphors I could have used, but I couldn't think of another one. Another one, like maybe OS's, like switching between a Mac and a PC. Like that always kind of screws my head for a little bit and then I remember how to use a PC. Again, not the greatest of examples. But yeah, you, you get used to it after a while. And it's just one of those things that you practice along with, you know, doing your three turns and your edges and your jumps. Be prepared for the crazy learning curve. And when I say crazy, I mean it's... who? <laughs> Again, this is my personal experience, and it's not going to apply to everyone. But, oh boy, before I figured out how to do a three-turn properly on inlines, I couldn't do anything? I couldn't do anything fun. I ran out of storage, so I don't really remember how far I got. But three turns, learning them helped. And then I got a lot more things really quickly as compared to before I figured out how to do a three-turn. I want to end this by saying that inlines and ice are different. They're different sports. That doesn't necessarily have to mean a bad thing. It doesn't make one intrinsically better than the other. If you are expecting to be able to ice skate on concrete, you're not gonna... No. <laughs> for a lot of people, inline skates are expensive, and for a huge financial commitment like that, you want to, you know, ask a lot of questions, get a lot of answers, get a lot of different perspectives. Hopefully this helped you. I have a couple other videos for people who have a lot of questions that you can check out. Uh, I'll put them up here or in a playlist somewhere. You can ask any questions that you have left down in the comments or you can DM them to me on Instagram. Thanks for watching. I really hope this helped at least a little bit um, and I'll see you guys next time.